Good morning, Rohan. How are you doing? I'm doing good, sir. How are you doing? Very good. So now schools are reopening. Uh, are you well prepared for the school this semester? Yes, sir. I'm feeling well prepared for this first quadmaster. Mm -hmm. So uh, we took uh, trigonometry well in advance, which you are going to cover after a couple of weeks. So I hope whatever we have done so far is absolutely clear to you. Do you have any doubts? No, sir. At the point, I don't have any doubts based upon trigonometry. Okay. So uh, there was one thing which I thought we can do today to wind it up. Uh, you know, the, we talk about always the angles in degrees. And we do write these angles in decimals, right? For example, we may write 34.5 degrees, correct? But strictly yes, speaking, sir. the angles, you know, are measured in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Are you aware of this unit of uh, angle measurement? Degrees, no. minutes, and seconds. Sure. No, right? I think it's a good time to introduce uh, yeah. exactly what the unit for angle is, which is uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds. So as you know, every degree is equal to 60 minutes and every minute is equal to 60 seconds. So we'll see how to convert these today. Okay, so let me share the screen with you. We'll look into some concepts and take up examples later. So can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, so can you please read the title? Convert degrees, meters, seconds, D minutes. as in degrees, M as in meters, and that S minutes, as in seconds minutes, to meters, decimal minutes. form. Minutes. Or minutes. Right. So in this particular case, in seven examples, which I'm taking with you, we are given the angle in degrees and minutes. Okay. You have to convert it to decimals, right? So on the right, can you please read the conversion factor? One minute is how many degrees? One sixtieth of a degree. Got it. One second is one sixtieth of a minute. And right. one second equals to one out of three thousand six hundred of a degree. Correct. 60 times 60. Correct. So that becomes your conversion factor when you want to convert from minutes to seconds, right? So, and to degrees, correct. So let's take the very first example, which is 23 degrees, 30 minutes. So when you want to convert this to degrees in decimals, right? This is in degrees, which is 23, and 30 seconds. So uh, 30 minutes. So 30 minutes, you know, the conversion is one into one times one over 60, right? One sixtieth. So you can multiply that 30 minutes by a factor of one over 60 because one degree is equal to 60 minutes, correct? The other way to look into is one degree is equal to 60 minutes. Is that clear to you? So minutes we write with this one hash here, correct? Okay, sir. So that is how we write minutes. And we know one, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So that if I put them two like inches and feet, right? So that mm -hmm. becomes seconds. So that is the way to see it. So we have 30 minutes, which is like half a degree, correct? Because 60 is full degree as far as minutes are concerned. So 30 is half a degree. So as expected, we get an answer, which is 23.5 degrees. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Right. Now, if you have to do 42 degrees, 15 minutes, how will you do it? Explain. That was already found. We already have a, a degrees in our minute. So it would just be 42 degrees plus 15 minutes and just multiplied by 1 60th. And then yeah. that would just be like 42.25 since it's half of 30. Okay. Now, what we get is 42.25 degrees. So you rounded this up and get your answer. Sometimes you have to round it, correct? So that is how you do. I think the steps are absolutely clear. When we are given in minutes, how do we do it, right? So that is how we need to do it. Perfect. So let's do the last one here. One degree, one minute, and one second. How are you going to convert this one? So in this one, it would just be 
one plus so one sixtieth plus one by three thousand six hundred. Yes. And then you get your answer. You get your answer, right? So that is how you convert when you are given DMS in you know standard says we say DMS degree minute and seconds when we are converting that to degrees in decimal form, right? Now let's do the reverse. That is to say that you are given the degrees in decimals and now you have to convert to degrees, minutes, and seconds, right? So obviously now we are going to multiply by 60 minutes to get from degree to minute, right? So now we'll have multiplication by a factor of 60 rather than division by a factor of 60, which we had in the earlier case. So the very first example is 23.25 degrees. How do we convert this to minutes and seconds? So, so 0.25 degrees is to be converted to minutes. We can multiply that by 60, right? Yes, sir. And then get our answer. So quarter of 60 is 15. And therefore, we get 23 degrees, 15 minutes in this particular case. Is this clear to you? Yes, sir. So it's basically like recheck. Yeah. So yeah, it's recheck. We just get the answer, right? Now, sometimes there could be, when you multiply, uh, then you get a decimal place. For example, in example number nine, we have 32.375 degrees. Now, in this case, if I multiply by 60, I get 22.5, right? We know there are 32 minutes uh, degrees. That is okay. As far as the minutes are concerned, that decimal 0.375 needs to be multiplied by 60. Now we get 22.5 minutes. That means in minutes also we get 22.5. That means 0 0.5 should not be converted to seconds, correct? Yes, sir. So we have 22 and a half minute means 30 seconds. So to get that answer, you have to multiply that decimal five by a factor of 60, you get 30. And in this case, your answer will be 32 degrees, 21 minutes, and 30 seconds, correct? So the decimal value has been converted to minutes and seconds. Do you see that? Yes, sir. So that is what uh, I thought we'll take, a, take up. I, I hope you got the whole concept. Now, we'll do an exercise. So this is a practice question. Are you ready with your calculator? Do you have your calculator with you? Just give me one second, sir. Okay, I'm just get your calculator. We'll just do these four questions now. All right, sir. I have my calculator with me. Not then. How will you convert this degrees and 30 minutes into degrees in decimals? Tell me. So what I would do, sir, is I would just add 40 degrees. So 43 degrees, yeah. Yeah, 43 degrees plus 30 minutes multiplied by 160th. And then I'll just get my answer of... Forty-three point five, sir. Correct. Because half of sixty is thirty, and as expected, <clears throat> 0. 0.5 degrees is thirty minutes, right? So that is how we get. Right? So because thirty minutes, we wrote as one degree is equal to sixty minutes. Do you see that? One degree yes, over sixty minutes, minutes, minutes cancels. The unit remains is degrees. Correct. Forty-three was already in degrees, so we could add degrees and degrees and write down our answer. You understand the concept? Correct. Now, we'll do this. 10 degrees, 20 minutes, and 55 seconds. Can you do the calculation and tell me the answer? So, that would just be 10 plus 20 multiplied by 1 over 60 plus 55 multiplied by 1 over 3,600. And that would just be... Ten to fifty one by seven hundred twenty. 
So I got a fraction form of 10 in 251 by 720. Then what to decimal? There is a button called change to decimal. What do you get? Yes, what do you get? Sir, yeah. I got 3.4686. 10, 10 point what? Well, I got 10.486. Okay. I'm that's sure okay. that's correct. Okay, that's, I'll just see. I did it earlier. So what we get is 10.349. Yeah, 3.486. We will round it to, for example, you could round to 3.5 also, right? Okay? So... You could round this up and here's the calculation shown to you. So that is how you could do it, right? Do you get the same answer? Yes, sir. I got the same answer Perfect. without rounding. Write, it. Yeah, you can write and round this to 10.35 degrees, right? 349, okay? So that is how you're going to do it. Now, let's move on to the other two questions where we will do the reverse calculation. We are given the degrees in decimals. 25.24 degrees, I need to write this in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Tell me, how will you do this? So what I would first do, sir, is it would just be like reverse operation. So 25.24 would equal to 25 degrees plus 24 minutes. And yeah. that would just be multiplied by 60, sir. And from there, it would just be 25 plus... And then 24 multiplied by 60 would just be 1440. 1440, right? Yes, sir. You have to do 0.24 multiplied by 60, not 24, right? So you divide by 100. Okay. And change it to decimal. You get 14.4, right? So when you do this, you actually get this as equal to 25 plus 14.4 minutes, right? 14.4, that, that is what you get for this portion. Is that correct? Yes, sir. I decimal. just got it right now. So that means in decimal, you get a minutes is 14 minutes, right? So 14 minutes, this is 14.4 minutes. You understand? This is 14.4 yes. minutes. Now, 0.4 needs to be further calculated into seconds, correct? We'll do 0 0.4 times 60. 24 seconds. Do you see that? Okay, sir. So basically, you get 25 in degrees, which is already there. Decimal 24 degrees will get converted to 14 minutes. And 0.4 gets converted to 24 seconds. Do you understand? So that yes. is how we are going to get the answer. Is this absolutely clear to you? Yes, sir. Perfect. Now, I would like you to do the last one. So as far as degrees is concerned, we know it is 45. So just forget about other things, but write down 45 degrees. Now look into 0 0.678 degrees, multiply by 60, and tell me what you get. I got 40.68, sir. So write 40 minutes here, and now 0.68. Multiply that by 60. Do you see how we are doing it now? Yes, sir. That is even better, right? So you get, again, you get 40.8. We can round this to one, right? Estimate to one. Is it okay? Okay, sir. So last, because we our accuracy is still second, so we are going to round it to this. Perfect.
So, sir, overall, I got 45 degrees, 40 minutes, and uh, 46 point, I mean, 40.8 so seconds. Yeah, so I converted that to round it up to 41, and that's how we'll write that answer. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Perfect. That's so basically, cool. sir, uh, when it reaches the seconds, and if it's still in the decimal place, that's the only time where we round it up. Yeah, then you again, because there's no further subdivision. We are only interested in uh, degrees, minutes, and seconds. So I hope you understand how do we do the decimal values or degrees, and then convert it to minutes and seconds when required. So this is very important for many trigonometry problems where we are measuring the angles. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Okay. One more concept which I want to uh, touch upon before getting into the um, other chapter. It is about the, uh, what do you say, bearing angle. It is about the bearing angle. Do you know what is the bearing angle? Yes, yeah, sir. Like it's over 180 degrees, like almost 360 degrees, sir. No, no, no. But, no. Bearing angle is an angle which is measured from the north clockwise. Oh. Are you aware of this? No, sir. I wasn't aware of that. Yes. So that's very important. Many students at your stage in grade 10, even in grade 11, they don't know about bearing angles. And there are many questions which are based on bearing angle in trigonometry. Mainly, whenever we talk about navigation, we always look from the bearing angle point of view, okay? So let me first tell you, what is a bearing angle? So bearing angle is measured from north. Bearing angle is measured clockwise from north. So here's the definition, what the bearing angle is. Can you please read this? It must be measured from clockwise of north. Bearing angle is measured clockwise from north. So when I'm saying, can you read this example three question? A ship sailed 100 kilometers on a bearing of 290 degrees. Right. So on a bearing of 290 degrees. So as you see in the diagram, that is the north for us, correct? Now, clockwise sure. means we are going into this direction. Is that okay? So this whole okay, angle, sir. which is shown 290 degrees, becomes the bearing of the ship which is sailing, right? So the direction is measured from this particular point, 290 degrees clockwise from north. And there you go, the red line indicates the path being followed by the shale ship, right? And that length, 100 kilometers is shown there. So that gives you both the things. One is the direction, the other thing is the magnitude, right? We call it vectors. So many students who learn trigonometry also deal with vectors, and this is how they actually look at the questions, correct? Now, can you answer this question? How far north has it traveled? How far west has it traveled? How do you figure this out? Okay, sir. So first off, I think we, we should look at the angle, sir, yes. and just find out how much it is okay so what is so this like, angle tell me it would just be angle x oh, how much because we are given 290 degrees from the north can you figure out what is this angle as or that angle which angle is convenient to you you could do any one of those two angles i think it would just be 290 degrees sir and then we just oh. subtract it yeah so we, if I say this angle is theta for me, for example, right? In that case, how much is theta equals to? How will you calculate theta? Theta would equal to 290 degrees, sir. No. Theta is the angle between the oh, west and the direction of the sailboat. So it should be 90, 90, and 90. That is minus 270. Do you see that? Okay, sir. This is 90, 180, correct? Another 90. So it is 270. You have to take away from 290 to get this angle theta, correct? So you get an angle of 20 degrees. Now tell me, how much does it travel north? Let us say this point P 
is let's let's call this point P, right? So what is O P equals to? How will you find that? Tell me. And what is O W equals to? O W and O P, sir. Yes. Okay, I can see now. So we have to solve like how much uh, he traveled far north. Yes, we know the hypotenuse in this particular case is hundred. We need to find the opposite side or the adjacent, correct? So you can yes, use sir. the sine ratios. As you know, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, okay, yes. correct? And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Since we know the hypotenuse, one of these could tell us the west direction and the other one will get, give you travel in the north direction, correct? Yes, sir. The north direction is opposite. So we will use sine for north and the west direction is adjacent to angle theta. So we'll use cosine for that, correct? Okay, sir. Can you tell me how will you find? Let's say we want to find what is TS because TS is the distance travel north, which is also equal to OP, right? Okay, sir. Same distance, right? Because this becomes a rectangle. Now, how will you figure this out? Well, that is the opposite direction. So which trigonometric ratio are you going to use? I'm going to use sine, sir. So sine theta, and theta we know is 20 degrees, is equal to ST, the opposite side, over the hypotenuse, which is 100, correct? So we can find what ST is. ST is equals to 100 times sine of angle theta, which is 20 degrees, correct? Yes, sir. And ST is same as traveling north, is also equals to OP, right? So that much it travels north. Calculate. How much do you get? I got 34.2 kilometers, sir. That is absolutely correct. So here you can see the calculation that ST is equals to 100 sine 20, which is 34.2 kilometers, correct? So it traveled 100 kilometers in the direction with a bearing of 290 degrees. However, it went west. 34.2 kilometers, and how much north did it go? Uh, 34. Oh, this is the north, sorry. We just calculated north uh, sine theta. How much west did it go? It you use cos, right? Yes, sir. How much do you get? So you use OP, which is O to D west going west, will be cos of 20 degrees times 100, and that is 94 kilometers, correct? Yes, sir. And I got the same thing on my calculator. Correct. So we can say that when the ship is following uh, the bearing of 290 degrees, it covered a 100 kilometer distance in which it took it west to a distance of 34.2 kilometers and north, oh sorry, uh, west it was 94 kilometers and north it was 34.2 kilometers. Is that clear to you? Yes, sir. So that is how we could do the bearing angle questions Wait. using trigonometry. Sir, I think there is a typo because it says 940 kilometers west. Do you mean 94 kilometers Yeah, yeah, west? 94, yeah, 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 yeah. 94, sail 94 kilometers. So it's here, 94.03. Correct. Thank you. Yeah, decimal should have been there, which I missed. Right. Good. So do you understand now the bearing angle also, right? Yes, sir. Now, I will ask you a similar question, which is kind of your test question. So we'll take a ship which sails, and we'll have to find the distance north and distance east, in this case, which it sailed through. So there is a ship which sails, let us say, 100 kilometers at the uh, bearing of 120 degrees. Then how much east? So 120, how will you sketch it? Where is 120 degrees? Tell me. So 120 degrees would be yeah. closer to the east side, sir. So 120 
So this is so, 90, correct? And yes, then 30 sir. more. Correct? 90 and 30 gives you? 120. 120. You get the idea. So we do yeah. 120 minus 90 degrees will give us 30 degrees, correct? So we have this time 100 kilometers along the direction shown. Can you find how much east and how much south did it sail? Okay, sir. And we already have 100 kilometers, right, sir? Yes. As hypotenuse. Okay. Let me label this. So O, let's say T, and we'll call this as point P, right? Here we'll say S. So east, it traveled OT, right? So what is OT equals to? I'm just sketching out the um, link, sir. T and then, and then here's degrees. So you're going to have. So that would just be the cosine. I like you to do this question without calculator and tell me the answer. Can you do it? I want exact value. Okay, sir. This It seems to be like a 60. Wait, sir, this triangle seems to be like a 60, 30, 90. Correct. That's why you can do the exact value, right? So 60, 30, yes, 90 sir. means the sides are 1, 2, and square root 3, correct? Square root 3. Yes, sir. So now you know the value of sine 30 uh, and cosine 30, right? Tell me the exact answer now. Sir, I got 50 kilometers and 53 of square root 3. You are absolutely right. That means, Rowan, you've understood all the concepts. So let me just uh, uh, tell the whole answer in a proper sequence, or would you like to sh share? Okay, tell me, what was your approach and how did you find the answer? All right, sir. So first, what I did was I started looking for east, sir. Hmm. So basically with 30 degrees, I did a cosine, sir, because right. uh, that way I could find the how much east was. So 100 uh, cosine of 30, I got 100. And then since I realized that this triangle was mainly like a 30, 60, 90 degrees, so then it will obviously be 1, 2, and square root 3. So I just multiplied it by square root 3 to get Over 50 two. and square root 3. Got it. Perfect. So that is the cost of 30 then. And you got the answer. Easy to calculate. And then you did south, right? Yes, sir. You have used sines and it is the opposite side, correct? We know sine is the ratio of opposite to hypotenuse. And therefore, you get the answer, which is 100 times sine of 30. And you could get the result. Is that clear? 
Yes, sir. Easy for you, right? So let me just mix and match. This time, we are having another particular triangle. And I'm saying that this time, ship sails at an angle. So I'm not giving you a bearing angle, but I'm giving you a different nomenclature. So I'm saying from north, it is, let me, we'll use exact value, okay, 135 degrees. From north, 135 degrees west. So how will you sketch? Do you understand this nomenclature? Let so, north yeah. so where will it be? From north 135 degrees west, where will, in which direction is the ship going? Let us say that is the origin. From here, where is it going? Tell me. In which it's point? trying to go more westward, northwest, sir, I think. So, so this is west for us, right? So 100 kilometers, 135 degrees west means what? Where will I go? 90 plus 45, right? So yes, sir. So this direction, correct? Okay, so more southern west. So that is it. And that is 135 degrees west. Is that clear to you now? So from north, yes. so this is another way of showing the angle in which uh, anybody can travel. Okay, so that's the triangle this time. And we have again taken 100 kilometers for easy calculation. And I want you to give me the exact values. How much west and how much south, right? Yes. So let's begin with west. which is O to T, which is 100. And this angle is how much for us? How much is this acute angle? You have to find the acute angle. Okay, sir. So that would just be 90 minus 135. Forty-five degrees, correct? Yes, sir. Sir, this is a 45, 45, and 90 yes, degree. Yes, yes. Line. So what is your answer? So that just be 1, 1, and square root 2? Yeah, yeah. 1, 1, square root 2, correct. So what answer did you get? I got 50 square root 2 kilometers, sir. 
Yes, both for north and uh, for west and south, you'll get the same answer because the angle is 45 degrees, correct? Sine and cosine values are same for 45, correct? Which is square yes. root 2 over 2, right? So we call this rationalization. If you make this triangle as shown here, then you may say that the sides are 1, 1 and square root 2. But you can multiply each side by square root 2. In that case, you get a hypotenuse of 2, right? and the other two sides of square root 2. So you get square root 2 over 2, which I've written here. It is also a rationalized form. You remember rationalization? Yes. We do not want the radical square root 2 in the denominator. So what we did was we have rationalized. So we basically multiplied the uh, denominator and the numerator. By square root 2 to rationalize it. You get the idea, correct? Yes, sir. So, so that is how we actually uh, could solve such a question. Now, I could actually make the question slightly more difficult for you. This time, what we're doing is that we are taking a ship which sails first 100 kilometers at a bearing of 300 degrees. At a bearing of 300 degrees, okay, and then it travels, uh, let us say, about 50 kilometers in the direction east. So you need to Wait, find- sir, Where was the first um, 100 kilometers being traveled to? Bearing of 30 degrees. Oh, okay. Now from that position, so let us say it goes to position A. This is reaching position A. And then from A, it travels 50 kilometers east and reaches the position B. So find total distance traveled. Or you can find, find the how far is it from the original point. I can say port. You understand the question. So a ship starts from a port. Let's call this port as P, right? Port P. And from here, it goes to port A, which is 100 kilometers at a bearing of 300. And then to port B, which is 50 kilometers east of port A. You have to find how far is it from its original position. That means P to B. So first thing, we have to sketch this diagram, and then we have to solve this question. Can you help me sketch the diagram, please? All right, sir. So first would be um, putting in the coordinates north, east, south, and west. And then afterwards, point P would just be like the origin, like the hub area. Correct. And then we we'll just solve for the bearing angle of 300 degrees. So where will it be? In which quadrant will it land? It will land in quadrant two, I think. You're right. You sketch it and I'm also going to sketch it. All right, sir. So 300 degrees. So it goes zoom kind of like this. Is that okay? So it goes uh, 300 degrees, 270 plus. Let me just draw this here, correct. Okay.
how are you going to solve this particular triangle not in so sir i think what i'll first do is i'll do 300 minus 270 very good that way i and then i'll get 30 degrees sir and then i'll just do so degrees and then so hypotenuse So, where are you now? Tell me, what have you calculated so far? So, sir, so far what I just done was I solved how much like by looking at the triangle thirty sixty ninety degree triangle. Yeah. So I was just like finishing um putting in one two and square root three. Okay. And now I'm just like solving it. So for PQ basically. Very good. Find out. <clears throat> So, sir, I got 50 square root 3 kilometers for a PQ, which was just basically like westward. Correct. And then I got, a, I got 50 kilometers southward. Very good. Now, how will you find the distance from P to B? Tell me this distance now. P to B distance. How will you calculate that? From P to B, sir? Yes. So oh, I found How will you find? Tell me the strategy. I'll just add up what P, Q, and Q is distance to us, sir. Q A is okay. We need to find P to B, right? So this particular triangle. So basically, if you look at this triangle, we can draw up a perpendicular from here. Do you see that? We know this B to M is same as A to Q, right? These two are same because it went east, right? Parallel. Yes, sir. So 
we know one thing very clear, which is B to M, and we can say B to M, the perpendicular distance, not, it has gone, is same as A to Q, which is 50 kilometers, right? Yes, sir. Now, how much is P to M? So P to M is how much? P to M will be P to Q minus A to B, right? It came back. Okay, sir. So this is 50 square root 3. Minus 50. Minus 50. You get the idea, right? So yes, we sir. know now how much it is horizontally, right? You can calculate yes, this value. Now, to find P to B, you'll use Pythagorean theorem. So P to B is a square equals to PM square plus MB square, or it is square root of the distance 50 square plus this distance, right? 50 square root 3 minus 50 square. Is that clear to you? You can yes, use the calculator and find this answer. So better find PM first. So P to M is 50 square root 3 minus 50 in decimals. Put it in decimals, right? We can now square this plus 50 square equal to square root answer, which is 3839. 61.96. Yes, sir. So 62. 62 kilometers. Do you see that? So it yes, sir. Returned a bit and is only 62 kilometers farther away from where it left. You get the idea. Yes, sir. Correct. So we found this to be 62 kilometers. Correct. Now you tell me. The bearing of the boat, sailboat, in its final position, find the bearing angle. That is to say, I would like you to calculate the angle, which is this angle. Can you calculate this angle for me? So that would just be 300. We have to find this angle, right? We have to find this angle. How much is this angle? How will you find this angle? You know all the sides. You know the all. You know the hypotenuse. You know all the three sides. You can use any trigonometric ratio to find the angle BPM. Do you get the idea? Yes, sir. Tell me how will you get this answer? You can use tan, for example. So tan will be ratio of these two, correct? Yeah. And calculate the answer. You could also write this as 50 square root 3 minus 1. So tan ratio, BM is opposite over PM. So let me just move this a bit, right? So what is tan? Tan theta equals to. Tan theta will be equals to BM over MP, right? So BM was 50, and this was 50 times square root 3 minus 1. So 50, 50 cancels. And so what we get here is equal to 1 over square root 3 minus yes, 1. Do you see that? Yes, sir. So theta equals to tan inverse of 1 over square root 3 square root minus, minus 1. 1. Can you calculate this? Put your yes, calculator sir. in degrees. And then it is already in degrees for you. My calculator sometimes is in radius. So I'll do this uh, little shift tan inverse within brackets, uh, 1 divided by, we'll put brackets, square root 3, minus 1. Mm. I got 23 degrees, sir. Pardon? I got 23, yes, my It has answer. to be more than 30 degrees, something wrong. So, so better is you have got square root 3 minus 1, figure this out, then take the uh,
53.79. So calculate properly. It's a lot of calculations required. So put square root three minus one bracket and then do it. Okay. Okay, See, sir. You get this 53.75. So what is the bearing angle? Tell me. So bearing angle would just be fifth, so 270 plus 53.79, sir. You have to add 270, right? Because you have to check from the north, right? So 323.79, which I'm writing this as eight, right? Degrees. Yes, sir. So 323 degree. 20, degrees at bearing angle. Did you understand this question? Yes, sir. It's a very complicated question. I just uh, made one. Normally, you know, a grade 11 and 12 student will solve this question using sine and cosine law. We did it without sine and cosine law. Do you see that? We just yes, use sir. the trigonometric ratios and then solve this very complicated question. Okay. So that is how you could actually solve very difficult questions based on application of trigonometry. And this is practical application. Perfect? Yes, sir. So we'll end our class here today. Can you please summarize what have you learned today? So, so far in, in today's class, I've learned about bearing angle and looking at complex equations based upon bearing angle and creating graphs while also looking at the degrees, minutes, and seconds. Conversion. Conversion. And yes. that was a really cool thing. Yes. So you learn many things today, which normally in grade 10 students are not learning. But you'll need all these as you move forward to grade 11 and 12. So you are actually ready with this unit on trigonometry of right triangles for even grade 12. You get the idea. And any questions in Waterloo exam or any competitive exams, which are normally asked like this, what we did just now, right? These are the type of questions which are seen in those competitive exams. You are um, in a very sound position to answer them now. I'd like you to take some challenging questions from my YouTube channel and do them, okay? Just search Anil Kumar, Trigonometric Ratios uh, playlist, and you'll find many of them, okay? okay? So do that. We'll end the class today now at this moment. All the best to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.